another day, another IEM. This time, it is the Kinera Celeste Bluetooth Beast. It is a $90 IEM with an interesting driver combination. But is it good? Let's talk about it. So without further ado, Hi guys, it's your boy Ralph and we're going to talk about the Kinera Celeste Plutus Beast that I'm holding here right now. It is a $90 set of IEMs and the configuration of the IEMs is interesting. So we have here a, um, a bone conduction driver, a balanced armature driver, and a square planar driver. I have no idea what Kinera Celeste is cooking i have no idea what the hell are they smoking either but there it is <laughs> so yeah before i continue uh disclaimer is out of the way this iam is sent over by hi-fi go this video will not have been possible without hi-fi go with that said they're not seeing this video prior to release all my thoughts are of my own they're going to see this video if they're going to watch this video the same time as everyone else so let's continue first I'm going to talk about the unboxing experience. So this is the box of the IEMs and it looks very clean and stylish with the orange patterns around the box. At the back, they show the reason behind the name of the IEMs along with the specifications and the accessories. When you open the box, there's another simplified cover. After that, the IEMs and the case are displayed in an orderly fashion. Inside the case, you have the cables and six pairs of ear tips. Opening the box that the IM sit on, it contains an instruction manual an IM cleaning tool and a metal bookmark So now we're gonna talk about the build, design, and comfort So in terms of the design, this is beautiful not gonna lie so look at this thing this is very nice the design is very clean and sleek but at the same time it has some sort of character into it i even like the alternative option where instead of the gold flakes it's more of a blue and that is really really cool i have to admit kinera whatever they do they always make very nice designs but how about build it's fine however there is something that is a bit weird on this when you wear this for the first time and you somehow manage to tap it there is a resonance i'm not sure if it's going to be audible in the microphone right here this is the microphone i'm gonna tap it i hope it gets picked up <laughs> there is it's vibrating there is something vibrating when you tap it and this is going to be audible or not really audible you're going to feel it when you're going to wear them on your ears there is a some sort of resonance when you try to wear it and then you tap it you're going to hear that resonance it's like the bang bang boom whatever <laughs> i'm not gonna make a blame time don't reference no 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 but it's just uh it's just weird it's like when you're wearing it for the first time it's very weird to experience it and yet, until now i really find it weird to wear and even just touching the shell it's just very weird hearing that resonance okay not really hearing but feeling that resonance it's just a bit annoying now thankfully it's not audible or a detriment while actually listening to music but it's something that you have to keep in mind for, especially if you move a lot. But yeah, uh, I think that's it for the build. And for the comfort, it's fine. It's a bit large when you try to wear it on your ears. So as I'm gonna wear it right now, it's fine. Like, it's fine, but it's a bit large for my ears. I think it's okay for my size. I've worn larger IEMs, but 
it's not going to be the most comfortable that I've ever tried. In a nutshell, build, fine, comfort, fine, design, beautiful. Kinera always makes banger designs. Oh right, uh, before I forget, the cable is also fine. It looks nice, it pairs well with the Kinera Celeste Blue Beast. But yeah, I have no strong feelings about the cable. It is really nice feeling on the hands. I don't think anyone will have any complaints about the cable of the Kinera Celeste Blue Beast. But you know, it's really good, it's really good. Now, how do they sound? <sighs> uh, where the hell am I going to start? This is going to be the third IEM in a row where the bass is its best feature. So let's do it with a twist. Let's start with the mids and the treble. We're gonna talk about the bass afterwards. Let's do this twist, okay? Let's do something a little bit different. Bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bad. Okay, so first time I listened to this set, I play some vocals. They sounded very off. I do not know what's up with this set. It just sounds weird. It doesn't sound shouty. It doesn't sound metallic, but it sounded weird. That is until I played some female vocals on the lower register. Like for example, Ayun Darisu, she has a bit of a lower tone voice normally. She can reach the high notes, but normally she has a lower register. And that's where I hear it. She sounded very nasally. Or in any music genre that has any lower sided female vocals or alto sided female vocals, they sounded very nasally. It sounded like they're very constrained on their breathing. I am not sure, but it sounded very, very off. And as for the male vocals, they sounded barky. Like they have too much chest in this. I am, it's very weird. Male vocals, female vocals, they don't sound very natural. It's even less natural than if they are shouty. This is different. This is a different elevation. It's not the usual, I am so I've heard that it's like going into shouty territory. This is different and I feel like this is more detrimental in the vocal timbre that compared to those sets. In my opinion, the mids on these, these are the next level of bad. I am sorry Kinera, I do not know what you did here. Now, it would have been fine if it probably just this alone, but although right now you're, uh, everyone is like, okay, this is probably a bad idea to get this IEM. Let's add another one on the list, okay? The treble, gone. <laughs> uh, not only do you have very weird vocals, treble sounded dead. Symbols sounded blunt. It's not fatiguing, but how the hell are you gonna get fatigued with the cymbals if they sounded very dead? A, they sounded dead. Cymbals do not sound lively. They don't have any sense of shimmer. Overall, it doesn't really give a sense of openness or airiness. It just sounded very dead. It's like if you're in a room with too much room treatment where if you clap, there is no resonance. It just sounds dead. Like, straight up dead. Like. It's not really that natural at all. There is unnatural in terms of being too bright where it causes metallic timbre or like cymbals having this very dizzy texture. This is the opposite, like very opposite. I have no idea why Kinera decided to go for this. I can see why they are targeting for a more natural listen. This is not natural, even though it is relaxed. This is not natural. It doesn't recreate perfectly the shimmer of the cymbals or even the airiness of female vocals, even especially on the higher registers, the soprano vocals. Yeah, it's not gonna happen in this set at all. I do not know why Kinera decided to go for this. I'm sorry, Kinera, but mids and treble on this, I am sorry. I wanted to light this set because it looks nice, okay? but it sounded not very good. I'm sorry. Oh, right, I, I forgot to talk about the bass yet. Uh, okay, bass. 
Let's not forget about the base, which is easily the best part of this I am, okay? It has an interesting characteristic where it has a really good sense of depth. If you're more into some sort of orchestra, some sort of a more indie and you want a bit more of that subtle boom and warmth in body, you are actually getting this type of presentation in this set. Actually really interesting type of bass presentation. I'm not sure if this is actually what the bone conduction driver is doing, but yeah, it's actually really nice. It has a nice sense of depth and can support sometimes on the imaging. Although I feel like the imaging of these is like really not that good because of the airiness being essentially dead. And also the upper mids, it's boosted in a very odd way. But yeah, the bass, on these are really good but everything else is just really not that good detail is fine but being a very dead set in the treble it doesn't really leave much to be desired and also in the staging department it's not really that open there's no feeling of spaciousness it's only decent in dynamics but I feel like there are some IMs that refer in the in the base department compared to this which is worrying because this is $90 <sighs> I do not know what they did but it's not good um, so yeah I'm sorry Kinera but uh, this is very off sounding and that's in the subjective front now we're going to talk about objective sound we're gonna go into frequency response graphs I can essentially show you where the problem lies so as you can see here there is a large 1 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz bump extremely large 5 decibels of boost and this is why I think that it's not necessarily shouty I mean it can be shouty but in my ears it's more of the fact that it throws off the timbre essentially instantly everything just sounded very weird on my ears uh, vocals, guitar, snare drum attack everything is because of that elevation right there like I can literally just kill this peak right now and all my problems are essentially done like they're gone pretty much instantly it sounded way more natural if it's more linear on that graph that's how i do not like this set in terms of its mids and at the same time as you can see right here 10k and above now for most graphs i don't recommend that you trust the upper treble a lot because of the inaccuracies of the measurement rig but in this case this is audible or you know not audible <laughs> so it sounded very very dead so even boosting this region with the shelf honestly it works it works a lot <laughs> but yeah i'm showing this right now because that basically shows that its trouble is very dead at least in this case in some cases it doesn't appear so uh in some other iams but in this case yeah, trust this. The trouble is gone. Dark. It's not fatiguing, but also like it's the it has the opposite problem. It doesn't have air at this point. It doesn't have any extension. It doesn't have any decay or natural type of decay in the symbols. It just sounded very dead. And yeah, I think that's the only complaint that I have in terms of the graphs of this. Of course, there's also the bass. I don't mind the bass. All I could do is normalize it into differently to show that it's a bit too woofy, but it's not really that huge of a problem. Again, I really do like the bass of the Plutus Beast. I just don't like the rest. Mids, treble, my god. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's it for objective sound. I already emphasized my problems there. I'm basically like a broken record. So let's start with comparisons. And in this case, we're gonna start with the SimGod EA500. Yes, I have the EA400 for reasons, but let's talk about this. So as you can see on the EA400, it is closer to my neutral target and as a result i find this to be a bit more natural sounding on my ears now there is still some deficiencies it's not necessary to be as close but i'm going to point that out anyway but uh, there is still that elevation from one kilohertz to two to 2.5 kilohertz but uh, i don't usually mind it 
it's not as bad as the EW200, at least based on memory. And also, uh, there is a bit of a treble peak on my ears on the EA500, which, well, the Pluto's Beast doesn't really have. But, again, the problem that I have with the Pluto's Beast is that it's not very airy. And on the same got EA400, it has slightly the opposite problem, it's a bit bright for my ears. But in this case, I prefer the EA500 a lot more. And there is no contest of which I prefer more. On mids alone, the EA400 is straight up better. So yeah, I think that's my opinion. The EA400 is better, why get the Plutus Beast over it? Now I think that's it for the EA400 comparing to the Plutus Beast. And honestly, the state of the $80 bracket, I really don't think that it's competitive. So this time, I'm going to do another comparison in the lower bracket. We're talking $20, maybe even the $15. The QKZ HBB. Oh boy, I'm probably going to trigger a lot of people for this. On the QKZ HBB, it's a bit more of a bass head type of bass. It's a bit boomy, it's a bit loose. And I feel like the Plutus Beast is a bit better in terms of that bass response. Especially that sense of depth. I really do like how the Plutus Beast has a very nice sense of depth. And then we got to the mids and the treble. Now, the QAZ HBB is a bit relaxed in that area, so that's how I think of it at first. So is the Plutus Beast, that's why I brought the QAZ HBB up. And even then, the QAZ HBB has a more natural mid-range presentation. It doesn't sound any weird in any way, shape, or form. If anything, Female vocals can sound a bit lacking, but for some people, they want that, especially for J-pop, if they always listen to many songs that is very, very bright or mixed pretty brightly. In this case, the QEZ HUB works on those genres, and the Plutus Beast, on the other hand, this 1K to 3K is going to get emphasized really quick, especially on those very odd genres. I am sorry, but Higher price doesn't mean uh, higher good. <laughs> I'm sorry. And lastly about the airiness, I feel like the QKC HB is also a bit more in this regard. It's still pretty dark, but the Plutus Beast, once again, for me, it just sounded very dead. Great. I compared a $90 IEM and a $20 IEM, and guess what? The $20 IEM wins. So what does this leave me with? Well. This is an IEM where I just don't know if this really will last. I feel like this is going to be a very, very, very niche product. I feel like only a few people will like this, even compared to the Phoenix Call. Although I don't really have the Phoenix Call, I only briefly tried the Phoenix Call, but I feel like the Phoenix Call has a better reputation of having a very unique sound because it's very technical for what it is. But this is not technical. This is an IEM that has launched a few months ago and then comparing this to an IEM that has been in this market for a long time now. So the fact that this doesn't really even compete, in my opinion, I think this is a goner. No one should buy this in any way. <laughs> I'm sorry Kinera. I want to find any fair thing to say about this set but it's really just not something that I'm going to daily drive with. It's not something I'm going to listen with. It's not even as comfortable as some of my other IEMs. I'm sorry. At least you have a really nice set of accessories. But it sounds bad. I'm sorry. I don't want to pull any punches. I guess that's it for the review. Uh, would you buy it? If you want to, if you're actually looking for that sound or you're actually looking for how it grabs like this, but do me a favor, do not, do not. <laughs> so I guess that's it for the review. If you reach the end of the video, thank you for watching. If you want to support me, you just like this video, comment down below your own thoughts about this IEM or whatever IEMs that you want me to compare with. I'll probably be uh, active in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys for watching this review and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.
That's take number gademon.